all, I would like to thank all the team of IDEX, Sanjay sir, Arsana Sada ma'am, Dr. Ne she's not over here, and all I think so last session, I, I thought it was very uh, interactive and I will make it very nice one. So let us, let us think with the pioneers, all Dr. Panikar sir, Dr. Rajiv Shala, uh, everyone is over here, so I can just tell what I am doing at my part. So just as base, I think so, of insulin pump, we all have heard about insulin pump, and insulin pump therapy at present in our country is also roaring. All the, all the people who are practicing diabetes, they have always a dream to start insulin pump in some of the needy patients whom when insulin high doses are going on, type 1 people. So just laying down the basic stones about uh, insulin pump therapy, these are some specific words, specifically tips for successful patient and physician experience. What is specifically, what, what we can share with the person who is using pump, what he comes to us, what is his considerations about pump therapy. He thinks now I am using this therapy and accordingly now I will be a non-diabetic. So a realistic approach towards this science has to be progressed because this is artificial intelligence and it is leading the world and we have to insulinize the people. So. The good physician treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. And these are some important words which we should keep while prescribing any, any therapy to our person. This was a design of the first insulin pump which was installed. And nowadays we know the insulin pumps available. But there are some fashion shows also going on with the insulin pump wearing. And each and everyone who has the pump and all the type 1 children who are progressing towards, we have insulin pump education programs. So it is now a delma of insulin pump display. Then, this has been the history all throughout of insulin initiations, the devices, the technologies, the AIs, the artificial intelligence which we are lying at present in 2022. So the expectation again increases, but the recommendations made for insulin pump therapy will always remain the same. The continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion is justified for basal and bolus insulin therapy in people with type 1 diabetes. Only providers who practice can assume full responsibility for the comprehensive pump management program should offer this technology. Because I have been seen since past 12 years, I have been offering this technology and in my state I have reached about 100 people who are using insulin pump therapy or you can say artificial pancreas which nowadays is but all throughout the journey of 12 years this is my experience if we are not evolving a proper insulin therapy team at our center which includes a physician a trained person who is known as insulin pump technician a nurse and educator to handle these people because these are device related there are many issues which in further comes in logic and it, it is not logical to manage everything so we should develop a team appropriate patient selection is necessary and must include thorough assessment of patients knowledge of diabetes management and other principles now ideal candidate is a type 1 person intensively managing insulin dependent type 2 then currently performing more than four insulins a day this has to be taken he must be on MDI that it, it is not right away the, on the first go we are offering an insulin pump therapy and if he is type 2 then also he must be having a higher units of insulin consumption more than 100 and he is having a realistic approach of doing SMBG approximately four times a day so these are the right candidates to be chosen for pump therapy which will not discard the therapy within six months they will not come back and say doctor you tumne mujhe phasa liya ye kya tumne mujhe pakda diya if you are achieving a particular patient you have to make in consideration he is he fit for the therapy or not if he is not fit for therapy, don't give this insulin pump therapy. Otherwise, it will be a, not be a boon to him. It will be a curse to all the system and the society. So the choosing the right patient is very much necessary now. Now, willing to maintain frequent contact to the healthcare provider and your team and education which you are giving for insulin pump therapy. Pump use in hospital settings, this has to be taken in count. We have in our emergency room, ye tamjam hata do. It is illegal, medical legally, you will be sued for doing this for a type 1 person. So there are certain guidelines which we have to follow. We don't have Indian consensus, but this can be, this has been experienced by me. And I was very much annoyed by a physician who just discontinued the pump for a simple procedures. So at emergency room or the hospital administration, should the patient not be able to manage his or her pump, the specialist responsible for the patient's ambulatory pump management should be contacted promptly and make decision about infusion adjustments. Hospital patient, hospitalized patients and their admitting physicians should encourage not to discontinue the pump infusion and should consult the specialist as needed. Now, these are some recommendations by AD, American Diabetic Associations. They say that if there is a critically ill patient, 
whom whom you want to uh, you you have to treat in ICU, then you have to transaction of this insulin pump has to be on IV insulin. And if there are undergoing some surgical procedures more than two hours, then also you can just, uh, just shift them onto the uh, IV insulin infusion. If not, if the procedure is less than two hours, you need not to change the pump. You do not have to discontinue the pump. Just you have to take certain precautions for that. For X-ray, the pump should be covered by a lead apron. For MRI, the pump and the material of infusion should be removed because it is having metallic contents. Then in ultrasound, there is no need of removing the pump. Just do not, pr the probe should not be pointing the pumps, uh, otherwise there are some settings which can be distorted. Then cardiac catheterization, the pump should be covered by an apron. Then for uh, pacemaker implantation, AIDs, the pump should be covered by a lead apron. Then for colonoscopy and laser surgery, the pump should be remain in place. So these are some procedures which we should see. Now, what is the role of the physician? The physician's role is insulin adjustment, basal rate testing, bolus type guidance, correction formulas. This have to be educated to all our type 1 persons or all uh, type 2 also who are taking. So carb, uh, carb calculations, insulin sensitivity factor, carb to insulin ratio, correction ratio, the small setting, not more than 15 to 30 minutes it takes in local regional language to explain how they can calculate their insulin sensitivity factor. Then avoiding overcorrection of each and every hypo and hypers, pump and exercise has to be trained very properly. Hypoglycemia is specifically seen while vigorous exercises. So if you are going for vigorous exercises in pump settings, the basal rate for infusion of ins uh, insulin delivery can be adjusted a little bit on lower side. Then cannula site ins examination is very much necessary. What a physician must see in the basal review, only three things. Whenever you hold the pump of a person, you will get a basal review. You can have a bolus history and the priming history by which you can yourself know about your person whom you are treating, how much, how much, um, uh, how much effort he is giving. Now, five principles to remember specifically. Every meal to bolus has to be done. Choose the right bolus type. Keep three hours or more gap between boluses. Avoid frequent correction of and thus insulin stacking. Then treat hypoglycemia with only 15 to 20 grams of glucose as recommended. Now patients to follow these five rules for success. Chain cannula within 72 hours. In our Indian settings, we are not doing the same. So the insulin pump therapy is not giving the result. Sometimes the dose is increasing. There is stacking also. You have to change the cannula every 72 hours. Now rotate the cannula site insertion. SMPG cell monitoring of plasma glucose is very necessary sometimes for for the corrections. Then each meal and, and except excise carbs should be not be covered with insulin. Never suspend the pump more than one hour. This was specifically for those pumps which were till date available and we were not having this artificial pancreas. Now as we are having this 780G that the system has changed should before prescribing this insulin pump therapy. So pump first or CGM. So start with the CGM to know about the glycemic variability of that person which helps in fine tuning and insulin needs. Then add the pump to your therapy. Now, what are the specific CGM at present in our, we have this CGM professional, then we have this Abbott Freestyle Libre, flash personal uh, uh, continuous glucose monitor, we have Metronics, Guidance, then we have this Gluconova at present, with Circa, which shows uh, this type of display over the mobile. Now, and we are entering into a digital diabetes era. What is this digital diabetes era? These are some dreams which are coming true all throughout. These dreams are not far at present since January, we have been having this artificial pancreas in our armorarium and we have implemented it to those patients. What they say, Dr. Sahib, you have put my punk. They are, each and every bolus is being given artificially by self-monitoring of these algorithms and this is a governed pancreas. So artificial pancreas works in this manner. There is a continuous glucose CGM sensor. Then that senses and gives the data to the reservoir, receiver which is, uh, which is uh, having its algorithm. Then algorithm, accordingly, it is directed towards the pump and the pump inf infuses the insulin as so were required. Now, this is a bionic pancreas. There is a difference between artificial pancreas and a bionic pancreas. In a bionic pancreas, there is a continuous glucose monitor which senses the hypose, and at the time of the hypose, the, there is a glucagon pump also which infuses the glucagon and accordingly the hypos are managed and then for further the continuation for the pump is there. Now we are having some smart more bionic pancreas available. Might be this is the future for bionic pancreas in the world and specifically this is one of the bionic pancreas which is coming into be as, as a, in commercial markets also. This is being developed by a father who himself is a doctor and he is making this bionic pancreas for his son. So now the dreams are not not very far, but at present, 
this dream has become a success in our country and we have been prescribing to many of them. So I have approximately used two of these pumps to my people in my state and they feel that, Dr. Sahib, you have put me in now I'm very free. There are algorithm-based studies and according now the main topic comes. This is how it looks like. Uh, each and every type 1 child of R who is being managed on MDI, this is a dream for them. But the cost of the pump, the pharmacoeconomics in the country at present is serving a very great problem. The consumption, the overall using and the uses is approximately 11,000 rupees per month after buying this pump. The consumables, the sensors, the tubings, the changings, it takes 11,000 rupees per month and the expenditure of this pump is approximately 6 lakh rupees. So it is impossible for each and everyone to consume it. But, but at least those people who are trying to buy a new car for themselves and they are having MDI, they can buy this pump to keep their car safe. So this is my protocol. Who can afford this therapy should take it at once. Do not prick yourself for four times. It is not at all necessary. So it is the responsibility of us as a physician to not keep this financial delma in our mind that it is an expensive therapy. Now with this, it is coming soon. Now there are some more things available. Might be in, uh, in March this year. It will be available in our country also. There will be cradle pump. Cradle pump is a pump that is a patch pump. This, this is a patch pump specifically which doesn't have any tubings. It will be having a cradle and you will not be throwing at present also these type of pumps are available which are known as Omnipod but you have to throw the, exp the expense of that motor, the reservoir, all is bared by the, uh, the person who is getting the treatment. So now we have a use and throw system discarded. This is a cradle which will be coming, it will be loaded with a cannula and there will be a permanent reservoir. So the cannula part will be discarded after every five days and each and everything can be used. And you do not have to have tubings, those long tubings which are very impossible to carry. So the, the future is coming more brighter. These type of pumps available, these are going to be launched within March or April. So the science is promoting us to take a leap to move forward. So with my these words, patient diabetes education and pump training should be implemented my, uh, with multidisciplinary team under a direction of an experienced insulin pump physician. Now, so how to counsel? This was a paper which we presented in SPAD and it was an oral paper which I presented. It is one of its kind all over world. It was for the first time we did this. We did this. The background was there. There has been always a multi misunderstanding in mind of our patients for insulin pump therapy even after being persistently advised by us. This is a common thing. Now pump initiation is in non-government approved setting is always a problem. We look entirely different initiative for pump education and initiation in type 1 people. So for the first time in the history of insulin pump therapy, we have used this method. So the aim was to compare the impact of insulin pump initiation group versus individual installation. Three hours insulin pump training program was organized for patients to educate them about insulin pump. In this program, type 1 people next to their kin, paramedical staff and diabetic educators were included and also those people who were using insulin pump therapy were also involved in this, in this group training. So, patients included for insulin pump were high level on insulin who were having glycemic variability, nocturnal hypoglycemia and uncontrolled diabetic and they were using MDI. So patients were taught about insulin pump, how it is applied, how to take the bolus, how to change the refills, insulin reservoirs. Patients were educated about carb calculation and insulin dose. Within a single, single program of two hours, the things were done. And under one single roof, kin, next to the kin, the pump educator, the people whom we try to educate and who are already using insulin pump therapy, this method was used for the first time. And mind you, a case control study was done. A common questionnaire was designed in these people. Pre and post training sessions were there and these questions were evaluated. The evaluated results, eight patients were ready to get insulin pump installed. Four patients were ready to get insulin pump installed too, but due to lack of affordability, they postponed the installation. But after this, this is the slide which I would like each and everyone to consider and who are listening online. These are some basic questions while giving training pre, before giving the training for insulin pump therapy, you have to ask from them. So what are these questions? Have you heard about insulin pump therapy? 
आर यू अवेयर ऑफ इंसुलिन पंप कंट्रोल द शुगर लेवल्स डू यू नो अबाउट बेसल एंड बोलस इंसुलिन हाउ मच योर लो शुगर लेवल वरीज यू डस योर शुगर लेवल फ्लैक्चुएट डू यू सफर फ्रॉम लो शुगर लेवल एट नाइट विदाउट योर नॉलेज डज इंसुलिन इंजेक्शन एफेक्ट योर डेली रोटीन आर यू अफ्रेड ऑफ इंजेक्शन प्रेक्स इज इंसुलिन पंप अ मीन ऑफ अ रिच पीपल इज इंसुलिन पंप अ रिक्वायरमेंट डज इंसुलिन पंप रिड्यूज योर इंसुलिन नीड्स आर यू अवेयर ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ इंसुलिन पंप डू यू फील इंसुलिन पंप इज नॉट फॉर किड्स डू यू फील दैट इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू मेंटेन इंसुलिन पंप दीज वर सम क्वेश्चन इन द रीजनल लैंग्वेज विच आई डास्ट प्रियोर गिविंग द training of this pump session so when i got this answer and after that we gave a post training questionnaire to them what was the workshop useful do you consider the use of insulin pump easy do you prefer using insulin pump in future will the pump save you from a, a sudden low uh, sugars can the insulin pump improve your daily routine do you think insulin pump is a means of a rich people do you consider insulin pump useful for kids do you still think that the maintenance of insulin pump is a problem and after getting these answers it was for the first time in the history of insulin pump therapy we installed eight pumps at a go and four were ready to get it installed on the next day so in total with one training session we installed 12 pumps so what it says it says that and 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 what did they do all of them took their those who were not ready also they took the mobile numbers they made the whatsapp group and so the group installation group in which the time conven for convincing them was only one session and for those who were we were individually doing it it took four to five sessions seven out of eight were self motivated none of them who were doing individually were ever self motivated they always thought it is only i am there in the world whom the doctor has prescribed this and mind you the education level was not mattering so in last with the conclusion the group installation the take home message whenever you want to educate people for insulin pump therapy so it is group installation of insulin pump is superior to individual installation peer interaction helps in strengthening and learning the process and it smoothens the insulin pump management with this these are my some last words which i always say napo to jano shakkar se zyada meethi hai zindagi life is more sweeter than sugar check to know thank you